Princess Celestia the Changeling Queen, Chapter 6, Part 2 In the past, within a hive close to the Everfree Forest, a Changeling Queen crept through the Everfree Forest. Her ears were standing high and directed sideways as she combed the still air for sounds. Quietly, she slipped behind a tree, her eyes glancing left and right, searching the endless expanse of trees. From above, a blast of green fire descended upon the Changeling Queen, enveloping her in flames and driving her out of sight. A cackle sounded through the forest, while one of the tree's larger branches burst into green light, fading away to reveal another queen, a triumphant, fanged smile gracing her features. Oh, Belladonna, that was pathetic. You thought that I wouldn't be able to find you? Snorted Chrysalis. The queen landed lightly on the ground, expecting to find her defeated sibling. Instead, she was met with nothing but charred branches and incinerated grass. Chrysalis was barely able to react when she herself was slammed from behind by two simultaneous beams of green magic. The queen was tossed head over heels and slammed into a tree so hard that she was embedded into the trunk. Groaning, the queen opened her eyes to be faced with the inverted forms of her two younger siblings. I told you that my plan would work, Belladonna, said Alternia smugly. You could have made that portal a little sooner, sister, protested Belladonna, her wings and carapace slightly burnt. At least I made one for you. Are you alright, Chrysalis? Asked Alternia politely, although the snicker at the edge of her smile gave away her joy. Chrysalis responded with a snarl and then a sigh. Oh, please tell me you got some Mulecris first, pleaded Chrysalis. The two younger sisters shook their heads together, grins on their faces. Ah, uh, sorry, we couldn't find her. I won't be surprised if she transformed into a squirrel this time," said Belladonna wryly. Just then, a squirrel launched itself at Alternia and Belladonna from behind, its disguise ripping away to reveal another changeling queen, grinning with anticipation. Chrysalis had to resist the temptation of sneer while Simulacris launched forward. To Chrysalis's horror, Alternia and Belladonna sidestepped the new changeling queen's charge and also gave her a small push. Chrysalis let out a scream of fury, and then was silenced by her sister Simulacris crashing into her. Your eyes betrayed her, Chrysalis, said Alternia in a sing-song voice. Simulacris merely let out a moan while Chrysalis could say nothing. Her mouth was full of Simulacris' mane. Alternia and Belladonna grinned and high-hoofed each other. Right after that, Belladonna's horn glowed as she conjured a massive green fireball. Alternia quickly opened up a portal and vanished out of sight. Belladonna immediately spun around and fired a scorching beam of magic, just as Alternia appeared behind her. The older queen just managed to conjure a ray of her own, before Belladonna's beam smacked into her and carried Alternia into the sky. Hastily, Belladonna raised a shield to flames, but it was too late, and she was bowled head over hooves into the swamp behind her. Sister, are you alright? Called Belladonna, brushing mud from her mane. She was met with silence, and for a moment, Belladonna's heart clenched, worried that she had used too much force. That was when a tall regal changeling queen, with a large crown-shaped antenna on her head, alighted in the middle of the clearing. She was taller than any alicorn. Her mane and tail were of dark turquoise green, and her armor polished in smoky black. On her back were two majestic insect wings and a bedraggled alternia. You seem to have won this exercise through your battle magic, Belladonna. Congratulations. You may return to the hive first, said the queen. Her voice was the definition of regal, with a silky smooth undertone to it. This was Camellia, changeling queen of the Everfree Hive. Simulacris, your disguise and acting was impeccable as always. Your timing has improved as well, and you have become more aggressive. The younger changeling smiled for a moment, but Camellia gave her a stern frown. However, aggressiveness does not mean recklessness. You should have not lunged at Belladonna and Alternia. Return to the Hive. Simulacris bowed respectfully and took off, her wings buzzing quickly. Camellia now turned to her upside-down daughter embedded into a tree. Chrysalis smiled sheepishly as Camellia took her head. Chrysalis, your ambush was executed perfectly, and I cannot find any fault in your disguise or combat prowess. Camellia's horn glowed as she extricated her elder daughter from her predicament and set her down. But you failed to account for the possibility that Belladonna might again ally herself with Alternia. You also were not able to mask your feelings during Simulcris' attack. If you cannot control your arrogance, Chrysalis, it will become your downfall. You're dismissed. Chrysalis nodded and flew away, head drooped. 
Meanwhile, Camellia dumped a drowsy-eyed Alternia onto the ground, waking her up and causing her to rise from her stupor. Alternia wished that she hadn't, noticing the glare in her mother's eyes. Alternia, you are an idiot. While your magical prowess is excellent, you need to practice your combat magic. Belladonna would crush you if she went all out, and portals cannot solve every problem. Your disguise and impersonation skills are adequate, but Simulcris's were better. I admired you using Belladonna as bait, but why didn't you just leave her for Chrysalis to disable? Your older sister would have done that without a second thought. Stay here till sundown and think about your mistakes. Ordered Camellia. Alternia bit her lip and nodded, turning away, but was stopped by a hoof on her shoulder. My daughter, please remember, only one queen can rule a hive, said Camellia. The older queen then smiled and kissed the younger's forehead before she flapped her wings and soared through the trees. Back to present time. Sorry for interrupting, Your Majesty, but if your sisters couldn't tell each other apart when disguised, why was your mother able to? Asked Shining Armor. Alternia looked up from the image of her younger self in the flames and pursed her lips, before answering Shining Armor's question. Since Mother was an Ascended Changeling Queen, linked to her respective swarm by the crown-shaped antenna that she has on her head. Because she's linked to her swarm, she can issue orders via a telepathic network, and can also tell apart disguised changelings within her own swarm. That extends to myself and my sisters. However, individual changelings in a swarm cannot communicate with each other, only with the queen. If my sister disguised herself, I would not be able to identify her. So that's why you couldn't tell that Chrysalis was Cadence and why she couldn't tell that you were a changeling. And that also explains why the changelings couldn't tell us apart from them when they transformed. Twilight gas. Alternia nodded, and then growled with repressed anger. If I had known about Chrysalis, I would have immediately thrown her out of Canterlot. The ponies quivered at the vehemence in the changeling's voice. Then, Auntie, how did you know about the possible threat? I don't think you have any contacts within Chrysalis's hive, spoke Blue Blood. That is a wise question, nephew. One that will be explained in time. As I've demonstrated, the childhood of a queen is basically preparation for her to become the leader of her own swarm. We were... never exactly told how, but we quickly figured it out. A queen would first gather the support of as many of the hive's changelings as they could. Then, when the time was right, the queen would link herself to her supporters, forming her own telepathic network and replacing the old queen. During the ritual, the new queen would develop the crown-shaped antenna and become an ascended changeling queen. This was the method that I and my sisters were preparing for. In the past, at the entrance at the Everfree Hive, Belladonna stood at the main entrance to the hive, a long hallway to the surface above. Beside her were about a hundred Jones, of various sizes. The young queen had a crown antenna on her head, a small one, but a crown nonetheless. Turning to the hulking changeling chevalier beside her, Belladonna nodded and the group set out towards. Belladonna! I heard what you did! gasped Alternia as she burst into the hallway. The older changeling queen was panting hard, her mane slicked with sweat. Pausing for breath, Alternia glared down at her proudly grinning sister. I don't know whether to congratulate you, hit you, or hug you. Belladonna laughed and embraced the taller changeling. Mother told me to tell you that she's proud of you and that you're not welcome for a visit, just because you took away some of her most promising chevalier hairs, whispered Alternia. Belladonna chuckled knowingly before she glanced back towards the hulking chevalier who had been beside her. At that, Alternia giggled. Young Carapace would be an excellent choice for a mate. That comment caused the younger changeling queen to blush furiously and glare at her sister. Alternia? Groaned Belladonna. <laughs> what? Tittered Alternia, winking knowingly. The younger queen sighed and gently eased out of her sister's embrace. Sister, thank you for everything. If you need any help, please send the word and I will come immediately," said Belladonna, her tone serious. Alternia nodded in acceptance, glad that their bond as sisters was still strong. I shall send you a signal should I require your aid. The two changeling queens embraced each other once more before the younger one trotted away, her changelings following closely after her. Alternia waved them goodbye until they vanished from her sight. I couldn't imagine running a hive, because that must be a fuck ton of work to try and lead every single one of those individuals to whatever they're supposed to do. 
Although, it's probably very fun in a weird way. Now how about we hop on over to our quirky donators. Top donators, Dash of Evergreen, Peter Coltard, J10 Man, Darkseid, and Ponyman. Courier Crew CI, Delta Omega, Strix, Runescythe9852, Dospo, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Hunter Norman, Secret Moon, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brethren Mordred, Cerberus, Goulash Eating Hazar, Starlight Glimmer, Squiddy Boy, David E. Sanchez, Soul Dragon, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Alex F., Rainbow Dash, Teal K. Anderson, TV Killer, John Becker, Leon Reynolds, Raven Speedster, Sacra Chow, and Mr. ECU. Thank you all very much for watching this video, live life to the fullest, and start up your own hive today. Of bees or something.